Yeah, I never thought I'd make it to 34. I didn't. Not that I'm not going to plan, but, you know, people who are, like, half my age who are like, oh, I have a fucking, I don't even know what, like, what do people have when they have, like, money and, like, have, sa like, savings? Is that what it is? Savings? I don't fucking know. I'm like, I never thought I'd make it here, so I just tried not to, like, totally fuck my life up. Um, I want to be... I'm up on a mountain. The birds are all quiet now. The stars will be out soon. I'm alone. I don't know what the hell I'm doing.
So, Allison, <laughs> after knowing each other for eight years through Tumblr and Instagram, <laughs> um, we're meeting for the first time, and I'm just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about where you grew up yeah. and uh, what was that like? Yeah. So picture it. Um, Metallica, Mat- Mat- Metallica. <laughs> See, like I'm already, you're gonna fish your pants. We'll fix um, it in post. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's my joke, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, I grew up in Metallica, Virginia, so if you were looking at a map and there's Richmond, capital city, uh, 95 corridor interstate, um, 95. And um, I grew up right where 85 branches off, like 95. And then you got this other little highway 85. And so I grew up in Petersburg, Petersburg slash Matoga. Um, yeah, small rural-ish town. It's less rural now because it's getting like super fucking developed. Um, what was Petersburg like? Boy, where do I start? Only child. Um, yeah, not you. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, I'm trying to think of where you even like start with how it was uh, growing up. Uh, so my parents split uh, right after I was born, and I like to tell people I come from a long line of waitresses and mechanics, because I do. Um, no one in my family has ever been to college. Um, I think that my dad graduated high school, my mom got pulled out of school. So, uh, just kind of like, you know, your typical kind of like southern white trash, uh, poverty, drug addled, alcoholic, you know, four cars in the front yard uh, that don't work. Dude, uh, fucking dad being a mechanic, he would just always, uh, he had like a really cool 70s Ford pickup truck and a um, 60, late 60s Chevy panel truck. It's like a van, essentially. Um, but no, my dad and mom have uh, had so many DUIs that they will like never drive again in their life. My mom's had like seven DUIs. My dad's had, they were talking about it last time I was there. My dad was like, well, I so was seven DUIs. The last time I was there a couple years ago, right before COVID, June before COVID, I picked my mom up and took her and we hung out with my dad and they were just shooting the shit. And my mom's like, yeah, I got seven DUIs. And my dad's like, <laughs> at least I don't have seven, like, you know, I only got four, just like some fucking trashy shit like that, but they're, you know, they're laughing about it, but it's, you know, we have to laugh about it because it's, um, pretty, like, you know, just get pulled over, live in a rural area, already don't have any money, and you get charged all this fucking money to go take, like, it's called ASAP classes, um, in Virginia, and if you don't have someone to drive you to these fucking classes, there's no bus, there's no, you know, so it's just this fucking like scam. Not saying that people should drive drunk and yeah. whatever, but it's like, you know, rural people definitely get, poor people get like the shit into the fucking stick because shit into the sticks. Yeah. No pun intended. Get at the sticks. Um, yeah. Um, so as a kid, I was raised by a single mom. Yeah. And the reason for that was my biological father is an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then my mom remarried. Um, my stepfather is also an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Um, and still in touch with my stepfather. Yeah. Like, love him a lot. He's my dad. Um, but, like, that was, it's still hard, right? Like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm guessing that it wasn't easy being a kid because his like, parents were getting DUIs. Mm-hmm. Um, not fun to like drive your parents around um, yeah and I never I never really like I mean I drive my mom around but not really N- like now I would if I had not left um, Petersburg slash Matoka yeah. excuse me um I probably would be definitely driving her fucking ass around um, that's part of why I left is like I don't want to you know I didn't want to like deal with that small town fucking bullshit anymore. I was just like, no, once I'm out, I'm out. I don't want to keep the, like the, you know, property cycle going, the addiction cycle. Yeah. 
<laughs> Is that um, what you mean when you say like small town bullshit? For like those of us who don't know like what that's like, is it? Are you talking about like the cycle? And I mean, it's largely due to class, right? Um, it's like a class hundred fucking twenty percent, like a class thing. Um, also race. But, um, I mean, for me personally, you know, my, I'm white, come from, like, a white family. Um, you know, my mom swears that I'm, like, a quarter Cherokee, because somewhere, I'm like, bitch, you just want to own a dream catcher. It's okay. You can have your dream catcher, Tony. Like, it's okay. I'm not, I don't know. I, you know, I've seen pictures of, like, my, um, like, great, um, like, grandma on my mom's side, and, like, they're all fucking Irish. My dad doesn't know his family. Um, so there are, like, some pictures of, like, you know, his brother, um, who's in prison for murder. <laughs> um, and there's some photos of him from when he was younger, and he looks, like, pretty fucking, like, native, but just white with, like, dark features, you know? So I just don't know. You don't fucking know. Um, but no, we're white. So, um, yeah, just the poverty cycle, dude. It's like, you know, so I grew up an only child. I had kind of, I was like, joked that I had two paths. So my best friend growing up, um, we got into punk together, skateboarding, like, all that shit. And we were like, you know, we used to draw, like, anarchy signs on our hands, because we were just like, yeah, fuck the government. We didn't really know, like, what that meant, but it didn't matter. We were just like, fuck the government, fuck cops, because, you know, we would fucking go skateboard with our friends, or, like, watch our friends skateboard, get kicked out of the mall. Any fucking authority figure, for the most part, we just were like, fuck you. Um, you know, because we're angsty fucking teens. Um, but even growing up, my family is like, yeah, fuck the cops. You know, my fucking parents got... My dad was, like, in and out of jail my entire life. Like, every member of my family has been to jail multiple times, except for my grandma. <laughs> who also doesn't drink. She's still... I won't say a giant cunt, but... Um, <laughs> Myrtle, Myrtle was not the best, you know, person. So you don't have um, a strong relationship with her? No. Oh, that's so interesting. No. No, I don't I was just... expecting you to be like, oh, she was like positive influence on yeah. my life and she, like my grandma, I mean, so okay. Yeah, she really was though, and that's the thing, is it's like it's never black or white, right? But um, yeah, but yeah, that cycle of just like growing up and then, you know, I was like, oh yeah, it could have been a juggalo or a, like an anarchist. I guess it could be an Eric or Juggalos. Once again, who fucking knows? But, um, yeah, I picked a, like, music kind of, like, rabbit hole to go down, and I was like, no, I want to get into punk, because I had an internet friend named Harris when I was, like, 13 years old who told me about all these punk bands. And so he'd be like, yeah, you got a... His screen name was E23 Etnies. <laughs> he was like... That's a shoe brand, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like skate shoes, dude. This is shit. Right? Like, yeah, punk is fun. Um, so he would be like, "Yeah, you gotta listen to like." He's like, "Oh, so you're into punk?" I was like, "Yeah, no, I'm like getting into like Blink 182." And he was like, "No, that's not like no, you gotta that's like." Not punk. You gotta like Green Day. Yeah, well, because he lived in Richmond. No, no, no. He was like actual punk. Like okay. he lived in Richmond. Grew up in Richmond. Really poor, you know, as well. And um, it was just like telling me all these bands to download off Napster. So I would spend like you know two days on my dial-up connection for AOL 3.0, downloading like I Like Food by The Descendants, and just being like, yeah, this is punk. You know, my first punk CD was like The Sex Pistols, Never Mind the Bollocks, and then like No Effects for the Climb. So, um, but yeah, man, I don't know. I just feel like I like got out. Which, like, the only difference between me sitting in this bar right now drinking is, like, I somehow found the fucking gumption and, like, found the resources, at least intellectually or, like, education-wise, to, like, try to break that cycle and, like, get out, right? There's no difference between, like, I am my fucking parent's child. Yeah. You know, like, if you met my parents at the bar right now, you'd be like, oh, my God, he has such great stories. Like, they're so funny, you know. But then it's like, and we've all met those people, right? It's like, oh, my God, yeah, you know, like, the drunk redneck. Like, oh, yeah, Randy down at the bar. And it's like, that guy's a dad to someone, you know. And it's like, I can't imagine what the fuck it would be like growing up with fucking XYZ redneck at, like, the trap. Yeah, like, yeah. the guy with the underwear. Yeah. <laughs> 
The guy with the underwear. This guy, like, wave. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> fucking the trap. Oh, uh, we should take you to the trap. Not tonight. You gotta fucking... I'll be here tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> they open at, like, 10 a.m., so... Yeah, sounds like the kind of place tonight, so... <laughs> the underwear oh guy will probably be there. I digress. I what the fuck was I even talking about? Um, you were talking about how you had the gumption to break the cycle. I'm really curious. Yeah. Like, I know that you can't boil it down to one thing, but what do you think were, like, the significant factors that allowed you to break out of that? Um, education. Yeah. Um, self-awareness. And honestly, like, as much as it sucks, like, my family showed me, like, taught me, like, what not to do. I never had role models growing up. I don't remember ever being, like, this is an adult who I idolize. I didn't idolize any fucking adults in my life. I had, like, really important teachers in middle school and high school, or mostly high school, you know, who, like, were super cool. Like, at least, like, one or two. Um, And so, yeah, I just fucking, like read and just realized from a young age of like oh this isn't like how you talk to people this isn't like how you conduct yourself if you want to be um like a good respectful person you know like so i just i don't know man i just it's i think it was survival just mean like i have to it was just me i didn't have a fucking i never felt secure never felt safe stable any of it and so i was like well it's me and like you know the internet, like the fucking internet was such a fucking instrumental resource for me as a kid. And I can't speak for anyone else, but it's not, I can't, you know, we're talking about like kids today, but it's like even fucking AOL fucking 3.0 back in the day was like, I could find out about bands and I was looking up political bands and find out about, oh, going up to Richmond to go to like hardcore shows or punk shows and just like meeting people outside of you know, my, like, small town, and my parents didn't have that, it's a different fucking generation, you know, my mom and dad, like, uh, were vanners, like, before they had me, and so they travel around to van rallies, like, in the 70s and, like, early 80s, and so I grew up looking at pictures of that, which is, like, yeah, I am my fucking parents' child, but, yeah, they didn't have the fucking internet, it was just, like, your bubble is small, and so the, having the internet let me, I guess, expand my bubble a little bit. And help me kind of be like, okay, this isn't what I have to fucking, like, submit to. I don't have to just be like, well, I'm here. I guess I have to get married and pop out some fucking kids. Which, like, I got my tubes tied. Like, I don't ever want children. I love kids. Don't want any. You know? So, yeah. Thank God for the internet. (laughs) Are there folks that... Did you see a lot of people who you felt like were in that cycle like yeah folks that mm-hmm. you grew up with yeah yeah i mean just like you know we all have those like facebook friends yeah. that you haven't talked to since you never really talked to like in high school but and then they're like friend requesting you and i'm like you like go to church and have like six kids and you like live laugh love and you're too blessed <laughs> to be stressed and i am over here like doing cocaine and drinking beer <laughs> so like yeah I don't know dude once again it's like if those folks are happy then like that's what they're fucking doing you know bless them god bless their heart but that was never a life that I wanted to live personally and maybe that person given the you know right um, access to certain resources or opportunity maybe would not have been there but that's where they are now and it's like I'm a judgmental bitch but I'm also like at the end of the day it's like Fucking, if you're fucking happy and, like, you're not hurting other people with your, like, shitty fucking opinions or whatever, then, like, you live in your, live in your world. What the fuck out? Like, who am I to be, like, no, don't do that. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. you're in Portland now. Uh, am I? Oh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a long ways away from there. Yeah. Um, and what's that like? What? You know? <laughs> that's yeah. really why we were talking about this earlier yeah yeah it's um it's great you know why i moved here kind no, of right no. really okay not really no someone hasn't been following my social media no i'm kidding that's fine a lot, no i know <laughs> called out <laughs> attacked <laughs> no so um 
So I was living in Austin, Texas. Um, for a year, I was shitting blood. Okay. So I was like, oh, it's probably like I drink. I'm drinking a lot, doing a lot of cocaine. Um, whatever. I'll just ignore it. I don't have insurance. Just ignore it. It'll go away. It didn't go away. Um, I got worse. And a lot of things lined up to where I um, moved out of the place I was living. My friend was like, oh, uh, I'm actually leaving for like two weeks. You should house sit for me for free. I mean, you know, he paid me, but I was like, okay. So I moved out of my spot, house sat for two weeks and had already like bought a plane ticket to Santa Cruz. Um, so Anyway, um, no, I uh, like some more vodka. <laughs> Pardon us. No, it's okay. No, never stop filming. No. <laughs> um, so everything just kind of lined up and I flew to Santa Cruz and I'm a very like open person. And so all my close friends knew like, oh, Allison's been shitting blood for a year. It got really quiet. I haven't shown you blood. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like scary, right? But I was also like in such a fucking weird like spot in Austin because I was working, you know, bartending, partying, playing music, going out dancing every night. Like it was, um, it was a lot. And so I was able to just like kind of just be like, well, I don't know. But then it got to a point where I was like, I tried to go through um, low-income community insurance, blah, blah, blah. It's fucking Texas, even in Austin, which is supposed to be like a blue oasis in the middle of fucking yeah. red. It doesn't fucking matter, dude. It's the social services. It's like, you know, I made maybe like $500 too much of my gross income a month to apply for like poor people insurance. Um, I went to the ER. I was like, hey, I'm shooting black. <laughs> Haha! Yeah. Ha. Um, and the fucking nurse, doctor, whatever, like, wiped my asshole with, like, a swab. Thank you. Um, speaking of wiping assholes. Um, and was like, looked at it. And I want to be like, bitch, you don't think I wipe my fucking ass every time I go to take a shit? Like, you know, but she was like, yeah, there's nothing that I can really do for you, like, as far as the ER goes, because you're not... She literally said to me, because you're not, like, hemorrhaging blood. What? Yeah, and I was like, oh. So I get a referral. She just to, said... Yes. Yep, yeah. you're done. Get out of here. Mm-hmm, you're done. Go live your life. Yeah, go live your life and just too. drag your bloody ass, like, down yeah. the fucking road. So, just yeah. to be clear, like, I do yeah. know that you fought cancer, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, like, I knew that. Yeah. I didn't realize that that was part of why you moved to Yeah, that. so... Okay, so that happened. Yeah, so that whole shit happened in Austin, and just, finally, I was like, dude, I have to, like, leave. I, you know, um, I used to hitchhike in a lot, like, in my early, mid-20s, and it's it was not unheard of back then for friends of mine to go to Mexico to get their teeth fixed, or to um, go to Thailand to get, like, top or like bottom surgery for like trans yeah. folks. Um, and so I was like, well, I guess I have to go to California or like Oregon to get fucking healthcare. Cause now I am homeless. Now I don't have a job. So I guess, please, am I poor enough now? Am I fucking <laughs> poor enough? Am I poor enough yeah. for you? Yeah. Is it good enough? You know? Um, so eventually, um, you know, Santa Cruz hung out, blah, blah, blah. Um, made it up to Portland because I was like, do I want to stay in Santa Cruz? I have like four friends who are dear friends of mine, but I was like, Portland's a bigger city, you know, no more people. Um, so got a, got a ride up with my buddy Steve, bless his heart, love you Steve. Um, got me to Portland in September, October of 2018. By mid-December, um, had a colonoscopy and they found, um, I had colon cancer. I had like a fucking tumor like in my colon. Um, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. So I get to like... It wasn't just the cocaine. No, it wasn't just the cocaine <laughs> for once. Jesus. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I went through surgery, got out, uh, got done with surgery Christmas Eve. Everything went as well as it could. My 
you know, I think what was supposed to be a three or four hour laparoscopic surgery. Um, laparoscopic, <laughs> laparoscopic is when they go in through your <laughs> belly button for the camera and it's like chopsticks through little incisions in the abdomen and they get in there and they just like tweezer up your fucking insides. But the tumor was like stuck to my other organs. Thankfully it like had not spread. And it's like, so everything went fine, but it was like turned like an eight hour surgery. Yeah. So recovery was what it was. Um, you know, I have to like get fucking colonoscopies and shit after that, but everything has been really good. Wow. But that is like literally why, like I yeah. still live here. Cause once you have that surgery, like you have to be under like, um, surveillance, I call it surveillance. Like it's like, you know, secret fucking camera thing, but they have to check you out. And so the first year it's like every three months you get blood work, um, colonoscopy or whatever it just varies depending um so i'm at the point now where like once i get back from austin i'll get like a ct scan and like i think i don't have to have another colonoscopy for like five years um so that's why i'm in portland i've heard that yeah. colonoscopies are not fun the worst part you're not awake for it yeah um i was awake for i think what they call an endoscopy i don't remember but I went in for this, I had had like so many, okay, so this also like in context, I had not been to the actual fucking doctor, doctor for more than like going to the ER for like a sore throat. Yeah. I didn't have insurance past 18. I had my mom's like welfare insurance. And so, but it was also like, no, you don't go to the doctor unless you're like dying, you know? But so once I was like 18 and up, it was like, oh, if I had like a sore throat, I'd go to the ER. I've never broken a bone, like, knock on fucking wood. So, in context, it's like, I had not been to the fucking doctor regularly. You know what? Preventative medicine, what a wild idea, right? <laughs> um, just maybe, like, you know, check in on people so that they don't have to uh, take, up, take up resources once they have fucking cancer or, like, all kinds of... Uh, Potentially preventable or, you know, catch it early kind of thing. Um, but everyone always jokes like, yeah, haha, ha, like, I, you know, I haven't been to the doctor in 10 fucking years. Like, oh, I, I bet I'm going to go and, like, have cancer and that's, like, what happened. So it's just like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, here I am. I just drove a friend to get a colonoscopy. Yeah. She oh. talked about how, like, you're not supposed to eat for, like, two days. The laxative is the worst part. You have to drink the laxative it's, and you just shit your brains out. I love day. shitting, don't get me wrong, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's, like, yeah. And then the drugs that she <laughs> got after shitting. the colonoscopy weren't even... I actually had this GoPro uh, set up on the desk. In her ass? No. <laughs> no. No. Um, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I set the, I set it up on the dash thing. She'd be all like, like totally jazzed and totally high after the procedure. No, it, she didn't even get that. Well, because it's not like, it's not. You shit your brains out. They put a camera in your ass and your colon, and then they take it out and you wake up and you're like, you're fine. Yeah. You can't drive yourself home because why would you? Why like would you want to after surgery. having that much shit like in your fucking butthole? Yeah. It took a while for me to get back into anal, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the laxative is the worst part. I've had like, what, like maybe like three colostomies at this point? Yeah. But hey, I'd rather have to shit a bunch than like not have a colon and have to, you know, be dead. And yeah. die. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But your friend's okay, though? Yeah. Yeah. I, she does not have cancer. That's good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, sounds like everything has gone for you, like, as well as could possibly have gone. Yeah, for sure. I got... I got... It's... To say that I got lucky is yes. uh, a complicated statement because it's like, oh, I was so poor that I got seen for medical attention um which is fucked up hi welcome to america yeah um but no i mean you know i am i feel uh i feel thankful maybe not lucky but lucky thankful you know yeah. um i was just like really mad for a long time still mad because uh 
the fucking, you know, I don't have to fucking tell anyone unless you're a fucking, like, moron that the fucking health system here is, like, totally fucked. And if I were a um, black single mother or a black trans woman or whatever, uh, anyone who doesn't have as much of fucking, like, privilege as I have just from fucking having white skin and I pass as, like, middle class, like, you know, um, I would maybe not be here today. So about like all the things yeah. that you were able to leverage to get yeah. here, right? Like you had a friend mm-hmm. who could get yes. you here and yeah. you know how to navigate yeah. the healthcare system. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's all my friends who are largely, it's, you know how it is, like with the punk and like anarchist and leftist and queer community. It's like everybody just, we're all we have. A lot of us don't have fucking family or like family with money. Um, or maybe if they do, they're estranged from them because they're fucking gay. Or whatever it doesn't. You know, I understand that just because someone has like rich parents doesn't mean they have access to that money um, all the time. So it's really nuanced. But yeah, it's like every. I don't know. It's just gnarly to think about because yeah, just fucking poor people helping each other out, just fucking mutual aid solidarity, and it's like, yep, we just all fucking. That's why poor people never get rich um, because they give their money away if they ever have it. It's like anytime I'm like, like when I got all my unemployment, I'm just like, broke. I'm taking everybody out. You know, just like behind someone in line at like the fucking convenience We're have store. One nice night together. Yeah. <laughs> this was the night we felt alive. But no, there's like a. I've just had so many people show up for me. And uh, I was behind this uh, woman in line, like, like right after I got all my unemployment. And I probably would have done this regardless, just because, like, how could I not do it? But she was obviously, like, having, like, a bad night. She's kind of frazzled, like, in her PJs and was buying cat food and a bottle of wine. And her card got declined. And I was like, I'm just back there. I'm buying, like, a fucking four loco or, like, 40 or something, you know? And I'm just like, I'm a fucking piece of shit. And so this poor fucking, this poor... No, she was buying wine to eat <laughs> or like you know what I mean like for a cat to eat wine to eat <laughs> can I get some wine to eat but her car got declined and I was like and it's a penny market like a market uh, right around the corner from where I live like half a block and so I knew like the guys that work there is like a, a really sweet family that owns it and I was like excuse me I was like how much is how much is her like bill I probably said tab because I'm just used to being at the bar because I'm a drunk but I was like you know how much is how much is it and uh, I was like, let me just, it was like 20 bucks or something, you know? And I was like, no, let me just take care of it. And she was like, no, no, no. And I was like, no, I'm taking care of this. You obviously like <laughs> need to, and she was like, I just, I don't know what's wrong with my bank card. And, and I was like, you don't have to explain. I don't care. I don't care if you're lying. I don't really, I really don't care. But just like, I'm happy to do this because so many people have like helped me out. She was like crying. And I'm like, don't make me, I'm holding my fucking Four loco, And I'm like, don't make me cry. I'm holding a goddamn Four loco. I haven't even drank this. I have to drink this before I start yelling or crying. But she was just so thankful. And she was like, no, no, no. I'm going to come back and like, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> wherever you are, like Rosé and cat food girl, I just hope that, you know, your cat gets the Rosé. What if the cat was getting the Rosé and she was eating the cat food? But that's what I mean is it's like people look out for each other yeah. and not saying that it's someone who's rich doesn't like give somebody a dollar if they're on the fucking side of the road but it's a different kind of like it's not um charity and solidarity yeah. it's like no i've been in your shoes i could be in your shoes yeah. here's a fucking dollar like someone paid for our fucking drinks the other night at bear paw because they like hit fucking big on the lottery machine we only had two quarters left, and I was like, fuck, maybe we should have gotten, like, so many oh, ones. No. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> back for another one. Yes. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that there's so much to, like, your, there's so much more to your story and, like, why you're in Portland and how you feel about it. Yeah. But um, where, where do you hope to see yourself in the near future? I don't know. Um, alive. Maybe. I never thought I'd make it to 34. I didn't. I think that's a common thing is like, not that I'm not going to plan, but, you know, people who are like half my age who are like, 
oh, I have a fucking, I don't even know what, like, what do people have when they have, like, money and, like, have, sa like, savings? Is that what it is? Savings? I don't fucking know. I'm like, I never thought I'd make it here, so I just tried not to, like, totally fuck my life up. Um, I want to be, I would ideally love to, like, not have to spend an entire winter in fucking Pacific Northwest, because it's fucking miserable. And I feel like everyone here gaslights themselves into. I'm sorry, no, you're from Seattle, you're from Portland. It's like everybody gaslights themselves into being like, oh my god, but this summer's so nice. And I can only talk about Portland, but people are like, oh, but this summer's so beautiful. And I'm like, oh, you're the really three, into my core the right three now. months, <laughs> the three, the three fucking months that you guys like have sun. You're insane. Who did this to you? Who hurt you? I think what you gotta understand <laughs> is I genuinely love the rain. Yeah, you guys are fucking insane. Yeah, I don't know. I'm so. Michael, but I, I, I settle for it. <laughs> I settle for it and pick myself up. It's not bad. The thing like, about it is, like, I love the rain. Yeah. But I'm from fucking Richmond, Virginia. We're a temperate fucking climate. We have four seasons. Yeah. Even if it's snowy or rainy, it's still sunny. Yeah. It's not raining for five fucking days, yeah. you know. So anyway, you're all fucking insane, and uh, now I understand why none of you can drive. No, I'm just kidding. So I know that you said like you would just like to see yourself be alive. Yeah. And that makes sense that you would say yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let's get like totally radical here. Mm -hmm. if, if I were thriving, let's, <laughs> let's imagine that. You, you, I know that you don't just want to be one of those people who just has money. Oh, I do. Okay, I do. Okay. But like, <laughs> sorry, but do you want to be exactly like those people? No, of course not. Yeah. No. So, I want like, money, let's though. Let's imagine that you are like the person you are now, and you're also somehow impossibly happen to have all the resources you could possibly have. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. What would your life look like? I think about this a lot. And it's yeah. not like, you know, I'm not like a religious person, but there's the thing of like, do not covet thy neighbor. Yeah. Um, but I <laughs> definitely, grow, you know, coveting my neighbor was like, oh, I go to my friend's house and they don't eat fucking frozen TV dinners. Like their fucking parents cook for them yeah. or something. And it's like, just growing up, like fucking, I wasn't like ever, I never went without I never did not have food in my fucking mouth because my grandma, like, had two dead husbands who were fucking alcoholic and abusive pieces of shit, and they're both dead. Fuck you, JD. <laughs> um, we named one of the goats after JD because he was such a fucking asshole, and this goat was a total dick. But um, that wasn't my mom's dad. I don't know the name of my mom. Do I know my mom's dad's name? Fuck it, who cares? His daddy was an alcoholic piece of shit. You're doing everything um, you can to not tell me yeah. what you would want. <laughs> I know, I know. Life to look like. I just want to, like, I want to be able to tour, not have to drive myself to my shows. Uh -huh. um, I want to have, like, a house big enough to have guests and have people over for parties and like just to have a not like a community space because i don't want to live in a fucking punk house i, I, I don't want to do that shit but i want to have like i want to be able to give back as corny as that sounds but i've had so many people fucking show up for me like who have like um you know more resources than i did or do um and i just want to like be able to fucking like give that back i want to be able to pull over to someone on the fucking side of fucking, you know, the Burgerville fucking intersection near, you know, whatever highway and be like, here's a hundred dollars. I don't care if you fucking buy drugs. I don't care what you do. Have this money. Because like the fact that like you have autonomy is like a great thing. Maybe you're gonna fuck it up. I'm gonna have a hundred dollars and I've spent a hundred dollars just on drugs and didn't eat. No different except for I uh, can drink inside of a bar yeah. and not look like I'm gonna like steal a bunch of shit. I don't know. But yeah, that's just what I want is I want to be able to like be comfortable and be able to like have a reliable car, you know, um, maybe have like a cool motorcycle or something like, you know, just something like fun, uh, health insurance, just like, you know, all the basic like necessities that I feel like every fucking living human should have. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. 
hearing you say that and also hearing you talk about like like your grand vision like the ideal like life is like I want to be able to give someone $100 Mm -hmm. and for you and me that's a lot of money yeah but in the grand scheme of things like there are people who $100 is pocket change they wipe their fucking asses with it yeah Yeah. they literally wipe their asses with it yeah and a lot of people just like it's a given to them that they mm-hmm. can do that whenever they want. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, you know, buy a motorcycle, buy ten motorcycles. Yeah. Um, buy a really <laughs> fancy motorcycle and then just crash it. <laughs> That's the thing that pisses me off. I see like YouTube videos. Like I can't afford a Ducati, but like I see like YouTube videos of a guy who's like, oh, I just bought this Ducati and I'm wearing shorts, and they just like, oh, hey! and like flip flops or some crash shit. It. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's yeah. probably also got one of those helmets with, like, the mohawk on it. Yeah. And it's like, bro, you just crashed my dreams. Yeah. That was my dream, you just you crashed. You shit all over my dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So. He fucking, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, for sharing all that. And so, hey, cheers me, like, cheers. on the camera. Because that's going to be a great shot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> my, that was my dream. It's again, crashing. <laughs> That was fucking perfect, dude. That was your fault. <laughs> 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 hey. Okay. Yeah. And then they do heavy, heavy food.